Are you wanting to argue your point to make yourself feel better? Or do you want to come to a point with more knowledge and understanding and hopefully the Spirit of God dealing with you, bringing you to the cross? And everyone that I've observed in the past 19 years of ministry that got saved and knew they were saved and knew that they knew that they knew, remember that last series we had? The first thing that happened was they asked questions and wondering why this and why that. I've not seen that not happen. That's the correct grammar. Some way, somehow, you're being dealt with. Now, this term walk, this term walk is used to describe our life choices. We either choose the broad way or the narrow way. We either choose good or evil. We either choose the spirit or we choose flesh. This is the walk in what Paul is telling the Romans and also all believers. Those who are in Christ Jesus make a choice not to give in to temptations. Not saying they never will because we mess up. Even after we become Christians. And that's when the devil likes to come in and make you feel like you're not. But overall, overriding in your life, you're not giving in to temptations. You find yourself getting stronger in the Lord. You find yourself growing closer to God. And I know there are those times of shadows, the valley of shadow, the valley of shadow of death. I understand that. But I'm talking overall life choices that you're making today. You're not giving in to temptation. And if you do, you're certainly not making excuses for it. You're not making excuses for your sin. You're actually having repented a heavy heart because of that sin. And I know some of us here today are having hard times overcoming things. And you're having a hard time getting victory in certain areas of your life. This is not to say that you're not a Christian. But you are remorseful of that. And you want to do better. And you're asking God to help you. You're not making excuses. The believer wants most of all to please God. And when we please God, that is when we're the happiest. Peter said it's better to please God than to please man. We didn't even talk about it, sir. The believer knows that it's hard, but if he keeps his eyes on the reward or the destination of the road that he's on, he will overcome. And that's the key right there, folks. The key to us overcoming is keeping our eyes at the end of the road. Stop looking down all the time. Stop focusing on all the problems here and now. And keep your eyes focused. Paul says this. I don't even consider it worthy to be compared of the glory which we shall receive. Remember that? The trials, these light temptations, he says, these light tests that we're going through. Light. <coughs> Brother, you don't know what I'm going through. I'm going through some pretty bad stuff. But let me tell you something. Paul said these momentary light trials we're going through. Guess where Paul was at when he wrote that? He was in prison and chained. He'd been beaten. He'd been shipwrecked. He'd been starved out. Left for naked. Left for dead. Everything. He said he gave it all up. And he called them light and momentary trials. They weren't even worthy to be compared to the glory which we shall receive. Now, folks, that is a picture of a person who is keeping their eyes on the destination and not keeping their eyes on the trials and the problems. They're keeping their eyes on the prize, as the old saying goes. Look at James chapter 1. There's an awesome, awesome verse of Scripture. Not that any of it is. But I like James. He's that no-nonsense guy. He's the... He's the guy that you really didn't want to go to his church, but you went anyway because you knew he was going to bless you. And even if it hurt, he was going to bless you. Okay? And he wasn't always fun to be around because he was like, this is it, guys. This is the way it is. James chapter 1, verse 12. Blessed is the man who endures temptation. For when he has been approved, he will receive a crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Now, you need to see the blessings in that. Where you might focus on the temptation. You might focus on the trials. Here's the facts. Men, women, we're going to go through trials and temptation in this world. Previously, James says, let not a man think he's tempted of God because God cannot be tempted of evil. God's not going to tempt you. Okay? But here's the thing. He knows you're going to be tempted. You know why he knows? Hebrews chapter 4 tells us this. 
that he was at all points tempted. When he came in the flesh, he lived on this earth for 33 years. He never sinned one time. He never let sin touch him until he got on the cross. And he took all the sin of the world upon him. That was a choice that he made at that point in time to take all of our sin. But if he never sinned, he never dabbled or experienced sin as far as going out in a lifestyle experiencing sin. Understand that. But he was tempted. He was tempted at all points. In any way you could possibly think, Jesus was tempted. Yes, he was tempted by greed. Yes, he was tempted, tempted by lust. Yes, he was tempted by anger. And many others. You've got to understand something. That all hell, all demons of hell, the devil himself showed up. You might think you got it rough. Let me tell you something. You haven't been such a righteous person the devil shows up personally to come against you. I'm not up to the devil. Please don't misunderstand. But the devil, he showed up himself. He tried every way he could to get Jesus to fall. Why? Because he knew that if Jesus fell, then there was no hope for man. He may have been able to But you understand this. He never sinned. For us, the promise comes. The blessedness comes. The approval comes, as James writes about, when a man endures temptation. And this is the confusing part. The confusing part for us is when we're going through a temptation. Right then and there, the devil says, well, see, you're a bad person because you were tempted by this. And it, it could be, yes, the first thing that comes to our mind is temptation by the opposite sex. Okay, let's get it out and open. That temptation comes. That's what we always think of. But there's other temptations. There's temptations to anger. Temptations to get back at somebody. Temptations just to let them have it and tell them what you think. Hallelujah. We're going to bust it real good. You know? That's what we're, that's what we, there's a lot of temptations out there to give in to the flesh and the desires of the flesh. But when you endure, when you're tempted, you're not sinning. When you give in to temptation, James goes on and explains, that's when sin happens and death is conceived and it, is, it comes out in a person's life. But the blessing comes when you endure that temptation. You stand strong in the Lord. As the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6, after having done all to stand, stand. Gird yourself, it says. The belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation, the shield of faith, and the sword of the Spirit, and the faith that is ready to spread the gospel. That is what we must be ready to do. When you're enduring temptation, Satan is trying to get you to fall. All demons of hell, whatever it is that is there at that point in time, is trying to get you to fall. And you must open your eyes to that. And that sin might feel real good. Or you might want to enter into that because it's just going to be a time that's going to make you feel good. But don't do it. Don't give in. Endure it because when you endure, the blessedness comes and the approval comes. And here is ultimately what happens. The result of it is that when you endure it, you don't get into it, you are showing there that point that you love Jesus more than the world. You love Jesus more than your precious sins. You love Jesus more than life itself. Endure it. Blessedness and approval comes. Now, back in Romans chapter 8, go to verse 5. In closing this morning, it says in verse 5, For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. The term set their minds is a term that means a person's will, thoughts, and emotions. Okay? The mind is a powerful thing. And it can really wreak havoc in our life if we give in to our own personal will, our own thoughts, and our own emotions. Those all three can deceive us. They also include, the mind also includes this, assumptions. You ever assume something about somebody? You ever assume something about a situation? You presume? Assumptions, values, has a lot to do with your mind. Actually it is part of your mind. 
what you value. Jesus said, there where your treasure is, your heart will be also. Beyond that, your desires and your purposes. Think about that, your desire right now. What do you desire more than anything? What is on your mind? What do you want to talk about? Things like that. What are you assuming about other people? What are you assuming about your situation? Are you allowing godly love, agape love, to rule in you? Where it explains to us in 1 Corinthians 13. Are you minding the flesh? The person who sets their minds on either the flesh or the spirit, this is what it means to do. This is the explanation of it. When you set your mind on things of the flesh or things of the spirit, it means to be oriented or governed by those things on which you focus. Your focus determines your outcome. So your orientation, what you're oriented, or rather what you're all about, and then you are governed by that. Everybody knows, does everybody know what it means to be governed? To be governed, to be ruled? I know some of you mechanics out there knows what a governor is. And if you've got a truck, you want to go faster, you hate those governors, amen? <laughs> those governors get in the way. They actually stop you from going as fast as you want to go, unless you know how to reset. <clears throat> I see you back there over your life, and I know you said, yeah, I'll do that. <coughs> talking about diesel in the To be governed by, to be ruled by. This is what your life is all about. This is who you are. You may be here at church, you may be presenting yourself to be a good, godly Christian person, but what about outside the church? What kind of testimony are you leaving with people? What kind of testimony do you have in the community? What kind of testimony do you have in your family? Those of you who have children, if I would have sat up here and do what Ark Linkletter used to do with kids, remember Ark Linkletter? Yeah. And ask them questions. What would they say? Would you be scared to death? Or would you let them even come up here? Think about it. I'm being serious. This is not, I mean, I had you there. Oh, my goodness, please don't share that. Oh, you know. Kids tell the story. And I'm ashamed. Now, our focus determines our outcome. And so, what are you focusing on today? What are you choosing? What are your life choices every single day? What do you have your mind set upon? What are you walking in right now? 